in these mines in the year 1942, and we can all remember that year. There were 71,035 total accidents, of which 1,471 were fatal, and 69,564 were non-fatal. Be it known that each non-fatal accident averages a loss of 40 days work time for each man injured. In those non-fatal accidents were 65 permanent total disabilities. 2,045 permanent partial disabilities. And there were seven major disasters with a toll of 132 lives. In 1943, there were several states to enforce its own safety rules and regulations. Is it any wonder that there's lamentations in the mining towns of this country? Is it any wonder that there's a spirit of rebellion against this condition manifested now, by the memorial services and the prayer to high heaven that's going up from every mining community. Is it any wonder that the widows in the mining camps now are reluctant to see their men go to the mines next week when the memorial period is over? Consider the family. Certainly, the responsibility for safety in the coal mines covers a long trail. From the miner up through the minor mine officials, to the management of the company, the state legislatures, the inspection force, the reviewing bodies in the state, the Federal Bureau of Mines, and the administrator of coal mines, who stands at the top in this period of governmental seizure with nothing to stop him from making coal mines safe, except his lack of desire to do so. I'll demonstrate. Surely I'll be delighted if the Congress and the courts will permit and our editorial writers condone and our millionaire pu publishers permit. I'll be delighted to see that no mine, no unsafe mine will work. But That job by contract, by pledge word, and by the assurance of the President of the United States lies with the executive administration of J.A. Krug, and he defaulted on it. To his shame, to the national humiliation, and to the death of 111 men. So what are we going to do about it? <laughs> 